My name is Patty Wolf, and I will be um, our moderator, MC, uh, for this event. Uh, I've worked for Unicon for about 20 years now. I'm currently the senior director of our applications integrations and data line of business. Uh, so looking forward to um, listening to the presentation today, and I will be moderating the chat um, for questions, and we'll be queuing those up throughout the, the course of the conversation. So as we look to the agenda, um, we'll do some quick introductions. We'll ask our speakers to um, introduce themselves. Uh, we're going to hear the latest from IMS. We'll talk a little bit about some lessons that we've learned in working with the various standards, things to watch out for. Um, we'll hear the latest on Canvas and then open it up for questions and answers. Um, let's kick it off with introductions. Um, Linda, why don't you start us off? Great. Hi, everyone. And it's good to see you all virtually. Uh, so I'm Linda Fang. I'm a principal software architect with Unicon, have been with Unicon now almost five years. Um, previous to that, I was at Instructure um, as one of the product managers working alongside Carl. Um, I was responsible for SIS integrations and Canvas data and analytics. Um, and before that, I spent many years actually at Oracle working on the PeopleSoft student information system to help them architect uh, the integration platform um, that takes data out of PeopleSoft and moves it out to learning systems uh, for rostering and grade pass back. Um, as part of that, I've been very involved uh, for close to two decades, I, I can now say, um, with IMS um, and have been involved in standards work uh, like the early work around learning information services, uh, which became one roster, have been involved in, uh, in Caliper, um, uh, LTI, uh, among other things. And I'm really happy to, uh, to kind of just bring you some of the work that IMS is doing um, into this, this webinar. Thanks, Linda. Carl, why don't we go to jump to you? Sure, I've been with Instructure since 2012 and I've been working on the integration uh, capabilities of Canvas using the LTI standard since 2013 uh, when we um, started the App Center in Canvas and announced that LTI was the standards mechanism to integrate with Canvas. And I've also been active in the IMS LTI working group and two of those years I was co-chair of that group where we developed the current LTI 1.3 and Advantage standards. Great, thanks Carl. And last but not least, Gary. Hi everybody, I'm Gary Gilbert, uh, based here in New Hampshire. I am a technical architect with Unicon. I've been with Unicon for about 18 years and the vast majority of those 18 years have been spent working on standards and standards-based integrations with LTI and, and all of the different IMS services. Great. All right, so we'll just dive into the meeting, jump right in. Linda, I think you're first talking a little bit about the latest and greatest from IMS. Yeah, thanks, Patty. Yeah, so this is kind of a, a roundup of, of a lot of different activities that have been happening with, uh, within IMS. Um, so some of you may already be familiar with this. Uh, IMS just had a digital credential summit last month, um, which was very successful. Um, one of the two kind of big announcements out of that event was that the comprehensive learner record standard has uh, 1.0 has been voted into public final. Um, and uh, currently, I think there's about five different products that are certified. Um, also, the latest version of open badges is 2.1. Um, that one's in candidate final, and there's about 24 products uh, from about 19 different organizations that have been going through certification there. Um, what's nice is how these two standards actually work alongside a third standard um, called CASE. Uh, CASE stands for Competencies and Academic Standards Exchange. That standard allows you to structure and exchange the learning objectives and the skills frameworks. Um, and then the Comprehensive Learner Record Standard it gets, uh, allows you to have learners that can own and curate their achievements um, you know, around things like academic transcripts. Um, and then, and so now we have open badges that can uh, include, can be included uh, as credentials in a CLR and can reference the skills frameworks that are published in case. So you can see how the three of them together really enable that interoperability from all the way from K-12 to higher ed to workforce and, and those lifelong learning pathways. 
Um, also, on, in other news, uh, IMS has launched the Trusted Apps Program. Um, this program is actually uh, centered around having a consistent way to vet supplier applications and certify them for data privacy. Um, so there was a rubric um, that was uh, curated from uh, examples that, uh, that were in the K-12 and higher ed market. Um, so many of the IMS members contributed that. Um, and then we created a, a process around, uh, you know, making a, you know, a fair way for, uh, for suppliers um, to, uh, you know, to, to be educated through this process. Um, and, and ensure that there's good uh, transparency in, in, um, in making uh, people aware of what is happening, what the applications are doing um, with data. Um, so, so a lot of that work was actually stemmed from a task force within IMS around privacy and app vetting, which I co-chaired. Um, and we came up with that, that rubric, which has about uh, four different sections. So it has data collection, security, third-party data sharing, um, and also advertising. Um, and Structure recently went through um, that certification process. Uh, so now they have that data privacy seal um, that's part of that trusted apps program. Uh, then the next one is around the student data learning model. So, so IMS has created a tool that allows for the discovery of specification parts um, in order to facilitate crosswalks to other industry standards, uh, there's, you know, a lot of times, you know, a fair amount of mapping that people end up doing when they're implementing a standard uh, from IMS. Um, and there are other, other industry standards out there that uh, make sense to, to enable crosswalks. Um, so uh, there's one in particular where IMS standards have been mapped to SEDS uh, version 8 um, and the entities within there. Um, so I actually helped contribute some of that mapping. Um, I was a reviewer for that um, student data learning model, uh, student learning data model. Um, and sort of related to that is an effort that I'm also co-chairing around Edu API. So the idea is that um, Edu API is really going to be the core data model serving, um, you know, kind of a, a to try to kind of maintain a common representation um, for data about students and then all of the different systems of record that, um, that, that uh, might be um, uh, reflected there. So um, Edu API builds on top of LIS in one roster. It's kind of considered you know, our next generation effort there. Um, and it's uh, also designed to be an expanded model that's more flexible for, for new ways of, of uh, modeling learning pathways. All right, so a couple more here. So the, last, the, the next one is around LTI Advantage. So um, there's a whole slew of new LTI Advantage services that uh, the group has actually been uh, going through and coming up with. And this was really the whole idea of, of LTI Advantage to begin with was that there's a core foundational element around the launch. And then there's just a kind of growing set of services. So many of you probably already know about the, the first three that came out, which were assignment and grades, names and role provisioning, um, and then deep linking. So to that, we're adding a number of new services. Um, I'll just kind of rattle them off uh, in the interest of time. We may not be able to go into all of them. So there's submission review, there's course group, there's a caliper analytics connector. There's also one around proctoring. Um, there's a, a bunch of um, activity now that's focused on uh, something called dynamic tool registration. Um, and then there's also a new one that's, that's noteworthy around a data privacy launch specification. Um, so I'll just talk a little bit about those two. The idea of dynamic registration is um, so you can automate the exchange of that registration information between the platform and the tool um, that you know, uses OpenID Connect and OAuth2. Um, so it kind of uh, it eases the administration for, uh, for getting those tool registrations done, um, you know, takes it uh, kind of out of any you know, uh, manual configuration that might you know, have some errors in there. Um, but at the same time, you give the administrator some control over how they can grant or deny tools you know, across the platform. Um, the data privacy launch is kind of also something near and dear to my heart. So um, came out of some of the work that we did in the privacy task force, uh, but it is uh, related to uh, en enabling the LTI enabled tools 
to uh, to manage things like uh, you know if you had a, a need to to uh, service a request around um, viewing or knowing what data um, the app is tracking about you um, and also uh, managing uh, delete uh, about you know your data um, the 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 tool launch is going to now have an, uh, a way to um, to designate and, and communicate that type of information. All right, uh, one last comment I'll just make is that there's there's been a significant um, uh, set of um, discussions within the IT, LTI work group around uh, the, the sort of current um, browser support for cookies. So we know that you know and LTI has gotten so much adoption. Um, and, but LTI does rely on cookies to do an LTI launch. Um, and, uh, and so with some of the uh, new um, developments in the way that browsers have been locking down or, or cracking down on the, on the use of cookies, primarily because of ad tracking, um, which you know, I think we all want as consumers to have better um, you know, transparency or kind of you know, not have um, apps kind of willy-nilly going out and tracking us. Um, this has an impact on the way um, that that uh, launching and and the sort of ecosystem that we've created with uh, with platforms and tools um, and the use of cookies. So there are some workarounds that have been floated. Um, there are some proposals that are currently under discussion, and IMS is forming a new task force to actually look into this more. Um, I think their first meeting was yesterday. So more more to come on that. All right. The last thing I'll mention is that IMS just started a new program called Standards First, um, and both Unicon and Instructure are signatories to the Standards First Pledge. Um, the whole idea there is really to start with the pledge, kind of recognizing the fact that you know you can uh, you know have standards, but maybe in name only, and that we really need to endeavor to make sure that the implementations do actually conform. And um, there is actually a new uh, interoperability rubric that IMS is working on. So, so um, uh, I've actually been uh, looking at that and there's a, a review cycle going on right now within IMS to, to really firm up what that rubric is gonna look like. And so that's going to um, really contribute towards, towards making uh, more, you know, more uh, transparency in the way that, that you know, we actually you know, have uh, vendors and, um, and, and, and standards that, that meet, uh, meet in the middle and, and kind of have um, the right set of interoperability. Um, so IMS has actually uh, moved their annual conference to October. They're, they were um, usually, IMS has their conference in May. So it looks like this year um, it's gonna be in October and it's gonna be a virtual event um, according to their website. Um, there's also in between going to be a technical Congress meeting in August. So usually IMS does have more of a, a technical implementer focused uh, gathering that's that's in that August time frame. Um, again, it looks like it will be virtual. Um, so I think the next time that we will be doing our update will probably be around that time frame, um, uh, uh, around that August uh, technical con Congress meeting. All right, thanks. That's that's a, a, probably a lot to digest, but uh, there's been a lot of movement in IMS and it's, it's really exciting right now over there. Great, thanks, Linda. All right, so moving on to our next speaker, which is Gary Gilbert. Gary, we'll turn it over to you to talk a little bit about some of your lessons learned. All right, so the, um, the goal of, of lessons learned is just to give uh, you some insight um, and share some of our experiences with actually implementing the various standards uh, and, and specifically with, with Canvas, but you know, potentially other LMS as well. And so today um, I'm gonna to be talking about uh, assignment synchronization. And what I mean by that is the process of getting assignments from a tool into a, a learning management system like Canvas and then keeping that data in sync. And uh, we did a recent project uh, with a smaller uh, ed tech uh, company. Um, they are already integrated with LTI 1.3, but they were looking for options around assignment synchronization. And they had some interesting challenges. So number one, um, 
on a per course basis, they were looking at having to push dozens or potentially hundreds of assignments uh, into each course. And in their particular case, um, the assignment dates, so things like due date, uh, when the assignment is locked and can no longer be changed, were critical. And although Canvas was their primary target, ultimately they needed to be able to support this process across a number of different learning management systems. So what I'm gonna be going through on the next handful of slides is the various options that we looked at and finally our recommended solution. You can go to the next, Patty. So uh, first option and, and ideal option, um, at, you know, as, as looking at a standards-based solution would, would have been to use the IMS assignments and grade service. So it's uh, one of the services that are part of LTI Advantage. And this gives you a standards-based way to exchange line items. If you're not familiar with the, with the term, think assignments and results. Again, if you're not familiar with results as a term, think about grades. And so this would have been the ideal way to do it. Um, it's a standard. Uh, Canvas specifically has some nice extensions around this service where you're able to add in LTI link information so that you can launch directly from the assignment once it's loaded into the gradebook. However, and as, as I mentioned before, um, with this particular integration, dates were key and the support for dates within the assignments and grade service is, is, is limited. Um, it was a late addition to the specification uh, and it's, it's not exactly laid out well in terms of what the dates mean across different LMS. So there is a notion of a start and an end date for an assignment, but those can be implemented differently um, depending on how an LMS chooses to interpret those dates. So while it would have been the ideal solution, it wasn't a great solution in this particular case. So we can go to the next uh, slide, Patty. So the next thing we looked at was, was IMS deep linking. And if you're not familiar with deep linking, uh, think of it as a way to uh, select a set of content. Uh, so you would launch over to a tool, you'd be presented with a list of potential links. You could select those, they would be sent back into the LMS, and then you could click on those links and access the different learning resources directly. So again, this was a standards-based approach um, and the deep linking response information allows you to include the line item details with dates. So it would have been a great option. Um, however, in this particular case, with the number of uh, assignments that we needed to add to a particular course, potentially hundreds, um, the downside was this has to be done one at a time. Right? So an instructor would have to go in, select one assignment, push it back to the LMS and do that multiple times. And so with that, it, it kind of became a non-starter simply because of the heavy lifting that the instructor would potentially have to do. So moving off of the standards, uh, we looked at the Canvas APIs and this is really a strength of Canvas. Um, they have a really rich selection of REST APIs very, very well documented. Um, there's pretty much, if you need to do something in Canvas, you, you can do it with the APIs. And specifically in this case, we were looking at the assignments API and the submissions API. So assignments would handle creating and editing of assignments and submission would handle the grades. And this approach would, would have worked. It, was, it would give full control. You could create your assignments um, you could add dates, you could do whatever you needed to do. Um, however, it was a Canvas only solution and there is a need for this particular organization to support additional learning management systems uh, down the road. Um, it also incurs some additional onboarding. Um, in addition to having to set up your LTI configuration, you'd have to get a developer key to be able to make these API calls. And then long-term, you know, it could potentially be seen as throwaway work as the different IMS uh, specifications evolve and, and the implementations are better and you can do everything you need to do with creating assignments and dates and things like that. So we put this one on the back burner as well. 
and finally got to our, um, our solution, uh, which is a hybrid approach. So taking the best of the LTI specification and mixing in the Canvas APIs to solve the problem completely and, and do it in a way that leverages the specification uh, and minimizes the amount of work that may need to be done uh, down the road. So we ended up using the assignments and grade service to create the assignments and then leveraging uh, the Canvas assignment bulk update API to update dates as they changed. Um, this was a great solution as it uses the spec. Uh, it's going to be applicable for the most part across um, different learning management systems. We did incur that additional onboarding step, but that trade-off was worth it to be able to do everything that we needed to do. So lessons learned. Number one, you know, make sure that when you're designing your implementation, uh, you're thinking about multiple LMS support from the start and build that flexibility in to the solution. Um, the standards are going to take you pretty far, right? Uh, the, they're, they're, they've evolved to a point where they solve a significant amount of the integration challenges that you're going to have. But there's always some amount of customization that you're going to need to make. So as you implement support for these different services, make sure you have a place uh, in your implementation where you can extend it and have some custom LMS logic if you need to. Uh, two, don't be afraid to go beyond the specification. Uh, we, we really didn't want to do that, but to get to the right solution, the one that solved the problem the best for a customer and for their users, we had to be we had to go beyond it and we did it in a way where we're leveraging the, the spec as far as we can go but also taking advantage of some great features in canvas with their apis that solve the problem completely and then my last point um, is take advantage of variable substitution parameters uh, if you're not familiar with variable substitution parameters it's a way to add custom parameters to your LTI launch where the values will be populated by Canvas at launch time. So there's a, there's a wide range of different substitution parameters available and they all came into play regardless of which solution we had gone with. We were going to have to leverage those variable substitution parameters and specifically things like the assignment due date. Uh, and I, you know, I feel like it's an underutilized feature and there's a lot of value and a lot of data that you could be taking advantage of in your LTI launch by using those. And with that, I'll give it back to Patty. Thanks, Gary. All right, Carl, I think you're up to talk a little bit about the latest and greatest from Canvas. Yeah, let's go ahead. Okay, yeah, we got it. So um, in the last uh, part of 2020, uh, we did some work around migration support. And uh, some of some of you may have tested it already, but we've had that support in place since uh, the end of the year. And the primary thing to be aware of is that um, in Canvas, you can have a 1.1 and a 1.3 tool configuration that is available in context. Um, but what Canvas does is looks at both of those matches on domain and prefers a 1.3 configuration. So that's an important detail to know. Um, also for historical links and con uh, that are in context, Canvas will look for a names and roles provisioning service and an assignments grade service, uh, URL endpoints and line items. And if they're not available, we'll create those in, in process as the launch is occurring um, to help provide those. And then the last, um, the last thing just to, uh, to be aware of is this allows an admin to be able to test your 1.3 migration of, a of your tool uh, without removing the 1.1. Um, this allows them to test it. If there's an issue, they can remove the 1.3 tool and it, it still works as expected. Um, and if everything works as expected, then they can simply just remove the 1.1 tool and move forward. Um, the other um, item around the IMS specifications that we worked on earlier this year is deep linking custom parameter support, which was something that I was hearing about on almost a weekly basis. Um, but uh, yeah, we've released that. We have some vendors testing it. It's available to test now. Um, and so if anybody's testing it, has any issues, we'd love to hear 
hear from you um, any of the issues you're experiencing there. But uh, so far, I, things are working as expected. So just looking forward a little bit, um, there's, there's not a slide for this, but I just wanted to talk about some of the things we're looking at. So for the rest of the year, we are um, going to finish multiple deep link support for assignments. Um, that's something that's come up quite often. And that's something that we're scoping the work for right now um, to start engineering. And then a couple items that we're looking at for the rest of the year is the dy dynamic registration that Linda talked about. And then we're looking at some of those other specifications that are um, available in public draft but aren't quite finalized. Things like submission review, the caliper connector, um, things like that. So um, if anybody has you know, feedback on what's important to them, I'd love to hear it. Um, but that's just a high level update of what we've been doing. All right, so I think at this point in the presentation, um, we can open it up to questions. But we do have a question. Um, and the question is, if you go into the, the Q&A area, it says, if we want granular details in quizzes, is XAPI the right standard? Or how can we do that real time with LTI? So I'm going to answer this and I'm going to tell you, I don't have a really good answer for this. Um, and uh, it's probably something that we probably could need to have some conversations about. Uh, Canvas today doesn't support X API. So that's, that's um, not, not something that we can talk about for this. Um, but there are some, there are some things we can talk about and quizzes is kind of a gray area for Canvas uh, because quizzes is also an LTI tool. And so there's some discussions that we need to talk about um, as far as um, as Canvas stuff goes, as far as assessments inside of other um, other tools, uh, Caliper might be a discussion um, that we can engage in. Yeah, I'll just kind of piggyback on that um, with what Carl is saying. So I think kind of um, I've been involved in projects where uh, where uh, other institutions or ed tech companies have been interested in um, in extracting the granular quiz data uh, from Canvas uh, instances, and so uh, they've pretty much um, I've uh, been able to use uh, some of the uh, well the quizzes API, both quizzes and quizzes two um, for some of that. Uh, they're also looking at using uh, the assessment item event, which is a caliper event. So that comes out of the, the Canvas live event stream. Um, and uh, there's, there's some, I mean, in the quiz stats, um, you get kind of a roll up view. Um, but I think again, I think where most people are, are wanting to go is kind of down at the item level. Um, and so, you know, that, that is definitely something that um, I think as an industry, we're trying to encourage um, you know, ways where a, any, any assessment tool is able to emit kind of data at that level. Um, XAPI is also something that, uh, that does come up. Um, and, and for the most part, um, uh, th there's been a conversation ongoing with NIMS to uh, try to understand how perhaps Caliper could be viewed as a, uh, a, a, a sort of an XAPI profile. So XAPI has a profile specification. Um, so there, there may be ways to uh, to map Caliper into XAPI, if you will. Um, so, so that work is ongoing as well. A couple more questions have come in. Um, so this is from Judy. I joined this briefing as a Canvas admin who helps faculty with LTI integration from publishers. Um, I don't know a lot about what is uh, being discussed, but for us, that was on the call today, but for us, there's an impact regarding publisher LTI integration. If so, what do we need to watch for or learn more about? So I think I'll, I'll add that. So, um, so this question, I'm going to assume a little bit of the intention of the question. Um, but I think the question is, as far as the updates that we're making, is there impacts to publisher integrations? And I would say not inherently. A lot of the um, work we're doing doesn't impact um, any current integrations. All it does is allows those integrations to take advantage of new capabilities. And so um, as the publisher tools implement some of these things like the deep linking custom parameter support, that's something that almost every publisher has been um, basically banging my door down about. Um, these are these are things that will allow the integrations to do more things and provide more capabilities to 
your instructors that are inter, you know interacting with those in Canvas. Yeah, and I'll just add to that 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 the whole idea of some of the advancements in the standards around LTI Advantage have been to make the experience for administering tools and allowing for for like publisher integrations through LTI to become more seamless. So um, as publishers um, look to adopt some of the newer features um, and work with the platforms, uh, th this is going to kind of, uh, you know, in, enhance the overall experience, make onboarding smoother, um, kind of all, all around. So that's, that's the definite goal there. Oh, and I think from um, Judy's comment, so she works with faculty on that LTI integration um, with publishers. Unicon, as a consulting company, we've worked with a, um, a lot of the major publishers in their LTI um, integration and the various standards, um, everything from 1.1 to working um, on 1.3 and uh, you know, for, for some of the, the other pieces, one roster. I would encourage you to um, have a voice uh, in your publisher community to push for additional integrations that you feel are, are important um, so they can get those prioritized. Um, another question, um, what is the standards-based way to get this granular detail or is there a standard that is looking to address? So I think that this is from um, his first question uh, VJ's first question around um, quiz data. So it was, what's the standards way to get the granular detail, or is there a standard that's looking to address? So VJ entered the first question around how to get quiz data. Yeah, I, I think we had um, mentioned it, but I'll, I'll just mention it again. I think where, yeah. where we're going with this is um, for Caliper, it's around the assessment item event. Um, and, uh, and then within XAPI, we're kind of looking for ways to introduce the caliper semantics um, into the XAPI profile. Looks like this question, next question is for you, Gary. So Gary mentioned that his solution used both LTI 1.3 and the LMS API. Currently, I believe those are separate processes. Is there any thought to how the LTI response, um, or excuse me, is there any thought to have the LTI response include an API token? So I think this is a question for me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Very good. So um, yeah, we're thinking about it. Um, we understand that it's kind of um, it's kind of laborious to manage both an API developer key and an LTI 1.3 developer key, and it's something we're thinking about as we look forward in the future of how. These um, these integrations get configured in Canvas and are, are managed. Another question coming in, and it's from Duane. I'm new to this space. I'm a senior developer tasked with evaluating these standards and technologies for cybersecurity training as part of a government project with Homeland Security. Are there security certification processes available for implementations using the IMS security standards? Yeah, so I can try to address that. So. So as part of the trusted app certification, there, there is a security section. It is at the moment, we've been kind of considering it as a uh, lightweight rubric. Um, there, uh, there is an effort underway to map uh, the trusted apps rubric onto um, what Educause has created, uh, uh, which is a kind of larger rubric, which um, is called the HECVAT for uh, cloud apps. Um, and so many vendors today typically are, are asked to fill out the HECVAT and the HECVAT has a long form and a short form as well. Um, so those are kind of the key areas that, um, that, that in our ed tech industry, um, you know, people are kind of looking to, uh, to, to use those as, um, as some form of, of certification. Um, I would say that you know, the, the, the ultimate certification around security um, practices is, is probably the ISO 27,000 um, uh, certification. Those are kind of, I would say, somewhat orthogonal to the IMS specs and the IMS process. But certainly, you know, I, I think uh, most companies um, will have a process um, whereby, you know, they may or may not, you know, be following ISO 27,000. Um, but then with regards to uh, application specific behavior and um, the data exchange, um, that's kind of where the realm where, um, where the IMS 
uh, trusted apps rubric and also the HECBAT cover, cover those sections. And if you have any, any other questions about uh, that or want to talk more um, about security and privacy um, and related to the education apps, um, you know, feel, feel, feel free to follow up with me. Um, we had another question that came in through the, the chat and it looks like you answered it there, Carl, but I'll just repeat for folks um, that are not monitoring that channel. So the question is from Curtis, for cookies, are there pending breaking browser changes that is dictating the timeline for the IMS working group? Um, Carl had responded, we don't know of any pending changes to date, but there's an understanding that changes could happen at any time. So there's a need um, for the IMS LTI working group to be more strategic and explore options to be more future proof. Okay, I'll go first. Um, th there, there's a couple articles that, that IMS has published um, and, and some of the other um, companies I know, like Unicon, we wrote an article a while ago as well, just to kind of give people some heads up on some of the, the browser changes. That was a, a sort of back last year sometime when Chrome was about to release their browser change that, that was gonna change how cookies were, um, were handled. They had pushed out their, their date for when that was gonna be um, uh, enforced um, due to co you know, COVID and a lot of other things. So that time frame uh, has been shifting. Um, but I do know that uh, in general, uh, most people have had to essentially do some form of workaround to support all of the browsers um, to kind of make sure that there's a way to kind of either launch into its, your own tab or kind of do a kind of hop before you launch um, that kind of makes it so that the third party cookie ends up being a first party. You're good. You said what I was going to say. So I, was, I mean, basically I was going to say like a lot of this is spurring out of the most recent changes that Safari uh, made uh, last year and uh, has made it difficult for some tools. All right. The questions have slowed down a little bit. I will just advance the slide. Um, take a look at a few resources. Um, so we do have some blog articles that are listed here in the resources section. Um, if you're still confused around what standards to use when, we've got an article that will hopefully demystify uh, some of that information. Um, as Linda indicated, we have an article around um, Unicon's pledge to standards first. Uh, Gary Gilbert wrote an article around um, customer onboarding. So some things that you might wanna think about, especially as folks are preparing for back to school, which is gonna be here before we know it. Um, uh, some, some thoughts and reflections on, on how to make that process seamless. Um, we've got some LTI 1.3 in action, YouTube videos, as well as some tips and tricks for implementing 1.3 in Canvas. I'll just do one last plug. Yeah, uh, please. We recently did, if, uh, if, if you're interested, we recently did a five-part series where we, um, we showed um, Martin Leonard, who's with Turnitin, actually implementing like parts of the LTI standard kind of on the fly. Um, and he, he even, uh, you know, worked on an implementation of the new course group service. Um, so, so if you're interested, we have that in our, I think it's in our YouTube lineup. Uh, yep, for it's in the YouTube lineup as well. Yep. Um, so we've got, you know, kind of has a YouTube channel uh, that you can review some of the the videos that we've put together. Also another comment, so Unicon um, has been working with Instructure for many, many years. Um, we now have a partnership agreement in place where we will be providing um, Canvas API uh, integration services as well as um, LTI consulting services. So if you go to unicon.net, look on our integrations page, um, should you have need for LTI expertise, consulting, um, you want to hash through some questions, please submit a, a service request. Those are routed to um, Unicon and we can get you in contact with a representative and get you taken care of. Thanks everyone for joining today. We sure appreciate it. Um, we appreciate your time. As Linda mentioned, we are planning for our next briefing in the middle of August timeframe. So we will be sure to uh, publish that event and, and hopefully you're able to join. All right, everyone. Thank you. Have a great rest of the day.